Hi, this is Lee with Crash Test Hobby. Uh, we're going to uh, continue on with video six on the Hercules build. Show you how I like to do the fins. As you can see, I slit halfway through the fins so that the one side of the plastic becomes the hinge itself. Let's do it again. I put a pin, make sure that I get them in the same ribs so that uh, it will fold open and just trim the plastic on the one side. Now it makes a good fin. Very simple to do. Let's put the horns on. After I get the horn where I want it, I just put some pins in to mark where I will punch the holes. Then I use my soldering iron and make the holes. Can't be any easier than that. Now just uh, using small screws, I screw it into place. You can see that they move well. See how the coroplast uh, works, making its own hinge. Now doing the tip fins, I want it to be an inch below the wing. And then I put both forward and back uh, slits in the fin where tape will go to hold it in place. You'll notice I'm using a framer square and uh, lining it up with the center spar in order to place my fins. I like the fins straight behind the motor so they're in the highest level of prop wash. You can use one large servo or two small servos on each side if you're going to do common elevons on these and not use split elevons. This is the setup that I like to use. You have to make sure you have prop clearance. Make sure you know where your batteries are sitting, speed controls, make sure all your wires reach. And uh, line everything up so that you have a rough idea of how to do it. This is the most complex six servo system. Some people, uh, if you're just hand launching and not using the skid, would just put one servo on each side, like the big servo that was shown previously. Uh, you don't have to go this much, but the ones you're seeing me fly in the videos have six servos and are using this kind of setup. I'm going to now show you how to install it. I get a central location where I will put my receiver into the wing. Now I'm going to put the rudders on. You have to have the rudders on to work your wiring either under or around the rudders. I like to glue some of the fiberglass spar into the holes that are in the coroplast. So I just a little hot glue, twist the spar up into the hole. I actually make these exactly the same. The rudders are interchangeable. And then I mark where I want to put the rudder and just put the uh, spars down into the hole. They're a little long, so I'll trim them off. There we go. Let's do the other side. Same thing. I actually put the horns on the inside. Since they're made the same, I can reverse these rudders. Then I like to use goop and glue all the plugs. Uh, you don't want those coming apart in flight. And there's a lot of them with this configuration. Realize that you can do this with just two servos. You don't have to do the six servos if you don't want to and you're going to hand launch but you won't have ground steering and you won't have the split elevons. Uh, I just put a razor blade slip down the wing and then I marked where I wanted the servo on the end. So now I'm running my wires down and I'm going to uh, mark the servo and cut the servo hole. I just use my soldering iron and cut it out. You want the servo tight. Make, make it so the servo goes clear down into the wing. I don't want any drag that doesn't have to be there created by the servo. And then push the wire in the slit going down the wing. Any place there's a plug, just open it up a little bit with the soldering iron. Here's servo number two for the second elevon. I've got this set up so I can run it as common elevons or split elevons, whichever way I plug the plugs in and then push the wires down in the hole. Then cut myself a wire box for the storage of the extra wiring that uh, is in along the wing. Pretty easy. 
Now we're going to do the rudder servo. Make sure you pull your wires out and you don't accidentally short out your wiring with your soldering gun. Then run your wires through the slit. Put your servo in. Now on the other side, I just duplicate what I had just done on the other side, so everything's the same distance, and so it all balances. There's my razor blade slit. Now I'm going to mark my servos. Oh, better draw a servo box first. But I'm actually lining it up with the slit that I've already cut, which isn't too visible on the video. And then I'm just going to cut the servo holes. You notice I uh, cut them tight so that the servo has to be pressed in. It's easier to glue a servo that's already tight in the foam than it is one that's got a big gap around it. And I want the whole servo clear down to where the arm is almost even with the top of the wing to decrease drag and turbulence that comes off the servo. On the bigger servos, you can lay them on their side too. Use a soldering gun to uh, open up a place to press the plugs in. And I just run the wires down in layers. Here's the rudder servo. And once again, I need a servo a wire box to hide all of the wiring that uh, is left over from uh, the extensions and plugs. You also need to wire in your motors and so at this point I'm setting up the speed control and marking where I want the batteries to sit. I built several of these and I have an idea of where they need to be to balance the plane. Uh, you could, at this time you should uh, check your batteries uh, the weight on the plane and just get a rough idea to make sure you're in the ballpark. And just using a razor blade and my soldering gun and, uh, and it, sometimes a long box knife, I cut out the battery base. I stand the battery up so that if I wreck the plane, the battery is protected because it hits side forward instead of end forward. And just through a series of cutting layers out, open that up so that the battery will fit in the slot very tightly. I run the speed control wiring along in the same slot as I put the servo wiring. And uh, at first I have the speed controls taped to the outside of the plane, but after I get sure of where I want them, I will make a tunnel and put them down under the surface of the foam. You will notice I left a gap between the batteries. This is so that I have room to mount my cameras or uh, also because the skid is underneath and will be applying a lot of pressure to the bottom of the plane and I don't want that to tear. Also remember as you're doing battery slots that the batteries will have a lot of insulation around them and won't cool adequately. So uh, make sure that if you need to, you make some ventilation cuts also around the battery. Thank you for watching video number six. Hope you enjoy flying your plane.